So the, the weekly energy uh, is all about the concept of um, the concept of spirituality, truly how to become spiritual. You know, and I'm, I'm watching my street just now. Those of you who have been from the beginning, I was here, then I left, watch from my window, open the door. As people are fighting in the, in the street, who's going to cross the street? Uh, both of them are right, actually. I listened to the conversation. <laughs> Nobody's wrong. The guy who live here, no name, and this guy live here, they're both right, and the third person also right. What do you do? What do you do for three people are right? Nobody's wrong. Point of view of three of them are perfectly stand well. And um, that's when a fight happened. Fight happened when everybody is right. So in this week, the energy of love, the neighbor of thyself, self is written in the Bible, in the Torah. It's written in this week, actually. So the whole concept of love the neighbor as thyself is actually available. Now, we can turn this lecture into a passive lecture, which means you listen, I talk, I meditate with you, you enjoy, you get more information, you say, wow, you're getting new secrets, say, wow, that's useful. And then in the end, you sit with your popcorn and say, eh, I think it was a good lecture, I'm going to come back again. Or you're going to look at it like that. And that's all the point of view of the receiver. Try to imagine a person who's going to the doctor. And the doctor look at his eyes, I have, I have a, a really bad news for you. I check your blood and you have three days to leave. Uh, and he said, doctor, do you have any solution? I said, well, you got to do too many things and I don't think that you're going to go ahead and do those things because you are too lazy to do them. And because of that, I tell you, you're going to die in three days. And the guy said, no, please, doctor, tell me, tell me, tell me. And he said, doctor said to the guy, hey, listen, what are you going to do? You have to bring thousand people to the center of town. I don't think you can bring a thousand people to the center of town and help them with something. But you have to bring all of them, same time, and then the decree, the negativity will go away. And when I saw your disease, I'm not just a doctor, I'm a psychic, I saw that there is no hope, because I know you, you're so lazy. All what you want to hear information and go home. Every year you come to check up, that's it. This time, there is danger to your life. And I don't think the danger to your life will move you at all to make a difference. The question for you, my friend, if you have got to be the decree on your life, what type of thing will move you? How would you move a human being when they don't move? Sometimes even death is not enough of motivational change. You know? Like, why would people fight in the street when there is people dying everywhere? What, 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 what's going on? Like 60,000 people dying in the United States, and still we are the same persona. 1918, disease, First World War, Second World War, problem, shooting, killing. What is going on? Is humanity ever going to change? And how do you change a person? With love, with respect, with fear. Fear usually is the best change, doesn't last forever. Respect is an okay change. And love you usually don't change anything. But we have a problem with that because this week portion is all about love the neighbor as thyself. So why God commend us that one of the greatest thing for spirituality is to be able to love another human being. It's your goal. It's your life goal. Well, it's your life goal from your point of view, not from the receiver point of view. It's not your life goal to be loved by another human being. It's not that you're counting how many people love you. You're counting how many people are you capable of loving. That's truly the goal 
of each individual. So I'm just starting with that, that we understand the fundamental of spirituality. Are you capable of loving? Are you actually capable of loving? But not capable of loving under condition which you are zipping your cafe latte on the beach or your pineapple or whatever, and you are saying, yeah, of course I love you. I'm talking about when there is a risk to your life, when everything that you have is gone. Like the story of Job, those of you are familiar with that. Are you capable of love then? That's the question of today. That's a question for you, my friend. Are you activating the force of love in you? How many people are you saving every day? Saving is not just because you're a nurse or doctor. Saving is saving the spirit, saving the soul, being aware of the pain, seeing what's going on with them, and understand, I'm not bringing enough people to spirituality. Spirituality is the life of the soul. And if we are not taking a human being and help them spiritually, we're killing them. How many people do you know in your life right now that can benefit from these specific words I just say? And how many people because of you would get help because you exist? Third question, how many people will you bring to the center of town? The center of town for you, my friend, is here right now. Vitaltransformation.org. Free lecture available. Camera is on. We give you information. How many people just because of you went on the screen, start watching it, start changing, start transforming? If you don't ask this question, then what are we doing here? <laughs> what are we doing here? Just becoming smarter. It's just another Netflix. So, after I try to make you upset, let's move on to the next thing. So the story begins with Achare Mot. It says, after the death of the two sons of Aaron. What exactly happened to the two sons of Aaron? We are talking about the two souls that came to this universe. They were the highest souls that ever to come to this physical universe. Nobody ever been higher than them. It's written in the commentary that the reason they died, they went into the tabernacle to the holiest place exists in the middle. And for, from their point of view, the tikkun is over, the problem is over, the Messiah is here, everything is perfect. It wasn't perfect for everybody else. And as they walk in to basically present the last negativity that exists on earth, they both die. The story is like that. Both of them are reincarnation of Adam. Those of you who believe in reincarnation. Adam, those of you who know the story of Adam and the sin of Adam, did two sins, sexual sin and Basically, food sin. The food, they don't know if it was wheat or grapes. Some say figs. The two sons of Aaron were drunk and they were not merry. And because they were not merry and they were drunk, they had to be killed. What does that connect to Adam? Adam had another woman before Eve. Her name is L-I-L-I-T-E. That's her name, I cannot pronounce her name for a reason. Too negative. And when he make love to her, if we talk about sex, those of you who want to talk about sex, it was basically masturbation. And we know that every time a man losing his sperm, the sperm turn into demon. I'm not going to go into those details. It's too many details right now. Then Eve came, and they were together. From that, humanity came. Eve gave him the wine. So now we have the wine, and we have the wife. Adam was with a strange wife. Nadav and Avihu, those two people who died, the son of Aaron, were not married. The wine that they drank is the same wine that Eve gave Adam. 
the same story they tried to correct whatever Adam couldn't they fell like most of the people who tried to correct Adam's sin what do we learn from that? many times people are so sure they got it right if you want to know you got it right you have to make sure that your surrounding got it right and those of you who are not grasping the concept of men need to have a woman in his life, either a wife, a daughter, a mother, somebody who influences him as a woman, not because the woman is important, forgive me all the lady, and all the big fan of the feminism, I'm not here to be against you, I'm not here for chauvinism or feminism, I'm here for humanity. And those of you who don't like my diplomacy, um, I'm so happy you don't. The idea is to get into a point that we understand that the men need a woman not because of a physical sexual reason or marriage or how it look, wedding, the ring. We talk about the two aspects of the soul. The men represent the seed, the woman represent the ground. A man cannot manifest itself without the ground. Like an apple seed who sit on the table has no value. The woman is the only force that can actually manifest a man. And the Zohar, in verse 24, say like that. As we study, a man who's not married is like a body which is only half. And when he connects to his woman, a soulmate, then they become one body. Not one soul, one body. And then they have one body and one soul, and then God can come closer to them. Why he doesn't say when a woman is married? Why would a man marry? Because women don't have to have a partner. A man must have a partner. Must. A man with no partner consider not, not exist. A woman is the ground. The ground doesn't need a partner. For that reason, Nadav and Aviyu, when they came into the temple, they came as singles and drunk, they couldn't connect to the Creator because the Creator has to have two forces, the male and the female together. If you look at the name of God, those of you who know the name of God, Yud Kevavke, Tachagamitan, the value, the numbers of Tachagamitan is 26. If you take the word love in Hebrew, is Ahava, 13, 2 times 13, 26, meaning when a man and a woman are together, you have the name of God appear. They didn't have it. And because of that, they had to die. Now, don't understand wrong. We're not here to judge them that they are wrong. Those souls continue after that to go to Pinchas. Then it becomes Elisha, Eliyahu Navi, Elisha the prophet. You know, those souls are never going to disappear from the world. They're always with us, helping us. So just to remember that. Now, how is that connected to spirituality? The concept of spirituality, many times, we think we got it right. Remember what I said before, love the neighbor as thyself. They did it right. They did it for love. They did it because they care. They felt it. Many times you feel something and you feel it right. Many times you want to do more. But you have to remember there is a force that's overlooking everything. And if that force tell you, love the neighbor as thyself, is not necessarily because it makes sense or because it's logic. It's simply because that's what that force wants to tell you. <laughs> One of the secrets that the Talmud, that the Kabbalah, the Zohar said that you can get all the secrets of your teacher if you serve. I serve for many years like a servant. I carry all the secret of my teacher and his teacher and his teacher, teacher, teacher. Because when you serve all the way, you receive all the secret. Those of you who don't look at life as what can I serve society? What can I serve humanity with? It might be a problem. And I'm not asking you to be a slave, but it's not about being a slave. It's about fear or embarrassment that I cannot serve. If, if I'm afraid to serve because of shame, let's say my son 
have to wash my hand on Friday night. Even I tell him, please don't wash my hand. I don't want it. He want it. He say, Abba, it's for me. I need it. When a person understand that serving is for the person who serve, then you can serve. But if you serve because you want to help the person you serve, don't. Stop serving. But if you think it's for you, like I wrote in my book, The Laughing Billionaire, and in my lecture on Vital, I hope you're all going to do them with a challenge. It's free. All those things is to serve. How many of your friends you serve with the knowledge that there is free lecture online exist? That's also serving. Pick up the phone. Start calling people. Tell them, listen, you don't have to pay a penny. All what you're going to do is to study so your soul get better. What does it take? Half an hour a week to go online? Better than sitting at home and wonder and look at your Facebook who like you? Half an hour a week. Not a lot. Help them. Check on them. Make sure you do the lecture with them. That's what it's serving all about. You got to serve your friend. That's what spirituality begins. Not enough of you, they reach the highest level ever. And because they reach the highest level ever, they felt everything. They knew everything. And because they knew everything, it was no room for others. It was them. And it's, it's not from a selfish point of view. They want to save the world. But saving the world starts with you serving others. Now, what does that mean to work together with others? Because that's spirituality. Remember, it's all about love the neighbor as thyself. There is a story that I like. Stories from the Baal Shem Tov. The story of the Baal Shem Tov is that it was a Saturday night, and normally Saturday night, it's after Shabbat, after Sabbath, people stay and have a little drink, they clean the room, after everybody left the synagogue and pray and meditate. So, There is a young gentleman walking in and he see 10 guys have a little drink together. He tell them I want to be part of it. He tell them, hey, you got to earn it. So how do I earn it? I say, you have to go bring a new bottle of vodka. So I, I say, all the store are closed. Where am I going to take it? Ah, you have to knock on people's store. Bring vodka. You'll be part of the group. So he's going around. He bring a little vodka, he bring another bottle with another vodka, they tell him, ah, not enough. Then he go around, after 25 minutes, he come back with five bottles of vodka, put it in the middle, he say, now you are part of the team. And they're all sitting together, they're all meditating too, and they drink, and they're meditating, and then, of course, they collapse. Saturday night, 5 a.m., the Baal Shem Tov, the master, arrives. Because they pray early in the morning to God, you know, this is the moment when sunrise, in sunrise, when you pray in, pray in sunrise, meaning sunrise, what is sunrise? It's the beginning of the day. That's when you can control the whole day in the beginning of the day when you meditate in the beginning of the day. And he's walking around him to get to his seat so he can pray. And one guy opened his eyes, he see the shoes of his master, the other guy see the, the, the head, and they're all standing, they're a little drunk. And after the whole standing five minutes, they realized there. And they're asking them, who is in charge of all of this? And they're all pointing the finger <laughs> to the new guy who brought the bottles of vodka. See him, it's this guy who brought the bottles of vodka. And the Barashemdo look at them and say, is it true? Say, yes, it is true. I mean, I want to be part of the group, so they asked me to bring a bottle of vodka. That's how I would be part of the group. So the Baal Shem Tov look at them and he look at him and he tell them it's such an shame. It's such an shame that you guys didn't invite me last night. And they were like shocked. The master tell them why he didn't invite them for the vodka drinking and the fun. And he say, last night I was dreaming after I was meditating. And as I'm meditating, In heaven, they show me that there is a unity among people who care about each other. With a little vodka, a little drink that you guys did together, you maybe didn't know what you were achieving. You achieve unconditional love. 
But the problem you did, you didn't invite enough people to the party. Because you achieved that what God wants. Spirituality has two things. Your personal achievement and how many people are you including in your spiritual achievement. If a person is just sitting at home and study, wonderful. Wonderful. Stay home. The corona is out. Who need to get sick, right? Work for me, make some money, and read some books. But what about other people out there? How are we reaching more people out there? How much, how much you can breathe that you didn't bring one person with you today that you can care about? Stop your breathing for about one minute even now. Stop it for one minute. All that. Think that the only way you can breathe again is by inviting another friend. Can you do that? Not for you, for them. So you know that every minute of breathing that you earn is because you brought another soul to this world. That's what this lesson from this story. And I continue. The concept of spirituality as we love others. God is telling us, I am holy, so you're definitely holy. Rav Brandwein, my teacher's teacher, write that what does that mean? Sometimes you give up. Sometimes in life you try to change, you try to become better, you try to overcome things that it's very difficult to overcome and you just can't overcome anything. You shouldn't give up for one reason, not because you're good, because your shoresh, your roots of where you came from is the creator. The creator created you. If the creator created you, within you, you have the creator. The creator cannot create something he's not. <laughs> so if we came from the creator, within us there is already the answer. So if you try to overcome anger, overcome jealousy, overcome whatever you need to overcome, overcome laziness, don't worry. You will definitely overcome it. You will definitely change. You will definitely make it. Just find a way to connect back to your roots. Try to look at it like you have a string attached from your soul to the Creator's soul. And all what you got to do is to make sure that string is being activated. And if that string is not being activated, meaning it's not attached, then worry. But that string is always there. All what you got to do is find a way to connect to your roots, to your shoresh. So, you may say, to be holy, I might do what a lot of monks are doing, which is a mistake by Kabbalah. We know Kabbalah is not about totally remove your old desire, and Kabbalah is not about having all the thing you want. It's the easiest thing to not to eat anything. Fasting, nothing. The hardest thing is to eat something, because every time you get confused what yes, what's not. But when you say, I will never eat cheese again, then you overcome it already, because if you say, I will leave a little cheese, I want to see if you can do it again. So in Kabbalah, you have to get to that level that you don't become like a monk. It's forbidden. Because if you totally remove all your desire, then there is no work. But you also cannot be slave to your desire. You have to find, spirituality is about finding that balance. So how do we understand it in an in a, in a easy way? In the old days, tell us Rav Brandwein, the Rebbe, the teacher, the mentor, the guru, after a long fast and meditation, the teacher would call every student and tell them, what did you ask from God? And one student said this, and then the teacher channeled what was the answer. So the story is about Rabbi Elimelech and Rabbi Elimelech channeled for one of his students who was very poor. His job was basically to clean the bar after people using drink and glasses, clean the bathroom. In the old days it was different than today, it was much dirty. Clean the horses people ride with. Difficult job. This guy, after the meditation and the fast, 
was speaking to God and said, Dear God, all what I want from you to give me is money. Not for me. Because if you give me money, I dedicate all my life for spirituality. Just give me money. Because like this, look at my life now. Between I'm cleaning horses to clean the toilet, to clean the bar, I'm sitting there and study for 10, 5 minutes and meditate for, 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 for 5 minutes in a different location. But if I have money, I will do it all day long. His master looked at him and said to him, is that what you ask? He said, yes. So would you like to hear what was God's answer? So of course I would like to. So God's answer to you was, he doesn't need your pray. He doesn't need your study. He doesn't need your meditation. The angel can do it perfectly. What God wants from you is in a time of struggle, in a time that nothing worked for you, find those five minutes to be spiritual. Can you do that? That part, the angel cannot give to God. Only human being. And what am I trying to tell you by that, my friend? If you think spirituality or life of the neighbor is thyself, is about doing the right thing. No. It's doing the right thing when everything around you is wrong. <laughs> doing the right thing when everything around you is wrong. And everything against you. Everything work against you. That's when spirituality and love begin. To connect to the divine, to the roots of where you came from, you got to find a way to climb back. And the way you can climb back by offering, when I say offering, it's almost like the altar. You're offering something that is uncomfortable for you. Not because you need to be uncomfortable. You don't have to. But every time you're making an effort, to apply love, to apply spirituality, to apply goodness toward people you love and toward people you don't like so much. That's when spirituality begins. You can't act spiritual when everything is work perfectly. So it's very important that we remember that in a fundamental point of spirituality, to connect that wire, to remember where you came from. And to understand if you know where you came from, then you understand that to connect your force to there, you need to find the time of struggle for you. And still, you can find how to behave nice. And if you can do it, my friend, then, I'm sorry to say it, but you're just intellectual spiritual. You're not spiritual. Spirituality is you struggling and you're still acting spiritual. Try to think about it like this. You're about to park the car in the hospital. There is a car that's blocking the entrance. You park the car in a different place. You realize you forget your phone, you're going back. You see a police give you a ticket. And they tell you, move the car or we tow your car. Everything that can go wrong. Can you behave spiritual at that time? Can you love at that time? That's what spirituality is about. If you think spirituality is going to a, some mountain, hide from people and be next to a tree, not in our time. In our time, spirituality is in a time of struggle. We are now in a time of chaos. We are now in a time of struggle, globally. Are we behaving better than before or we believe because we already been struggling it's okay to lower the bar of expectation for myself and act in a non-spiritual way are we getting into our comfort zone and just forget about the effort we have to make just to let you know vital we are not stopping we have every weekend those of you who don't know for my balcony, I pray, we're getting the Torah out for the people. We're making sure that everybody is benefit from our existence. We will make sure that that bar mitzvah boy who need to read the Torah, that my son will go ahead and help him. Not 
because we try to be spiritual, not we try to be better or the ego or the stupid ego. No, it's because we believe in vital. We believe that the only way, the only way you can stay connected to the divine is by acting spiritually in a tough time. Now, after we connect, <laughs> not enough. Then we have to clean ourselves. And that's called Kedoshim. Kedoshim means holy. The holiness of the Creator, the holiness of the Divine, want to dwell on us. What happened if you buy the most expensive wine? I, I don't know about prices for wine, but let's say $200 wine, I think, pretty expensive. And I come to your house, and you say, Aliyah, what, what a respect that you come to my house. I want to give you some of my wine. It's $200 a bottle, small bottle. And I reach out to my jacket, and I have this dirty glass that I carry with me, so dirty. And you say, can I have your glass to wash it so you can enjoy the wine? And I said, no, it's my glass. Say, Eliyahu, you don't get it. If I put the greatest wine in the world into your cup, and it's dirty, you it will not taste the wine. You will taste the dirt, Eliyahu. Why don't you let me wash the cup? Now, he said, do that carefully. Cup can be washed in three ways. Fear, respect, and love. Either you look at the cup and say, wow, it's so dirty, it's going to kill me. That's fear. Either as a respect to my body and soul, I say to myself, you know what? It's time for me to respect my body and soul and wash it. Or either from love, I want to respect you, the one who gave me the wine, and I respect my body and soul, and I love you, and I love me, and for that reason I'm washing the cup. The cup is referred to your soul and body, my friend. If you love the neighbor as thyself, in the time of struggle, that's how you connect your wiring back to the Creator. If you want then that the Divine will start giving you all the nourishment that you meant to have, not that you want, that you meant to have, meaning every one of us meant to have so many good things in their life. Every, per every person here is supposed to have no pressure at all. You know, if you look at the disease, they call it the corona or the virus, whatever you want to call it, what's good about it? No disease happened as a mistake. No, nothing happened, it's just random. You know, if you look at it and say, ah, it's random. Disease from China, Wuhan, whatever. You know, but there is no coincidence. People are dying. There's no, the, 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 the creator didn't take a vacation to Hawaii now, and the creator sitting there and say, ah, let me just take vacation for a few months and come back soon. No, it's part of the creator. But unfortunately, I don't think we're getting that lesson. We're still fighting. Everybody in the street still fighting. Everybody still hating. You have any of your enemy in this time? Pick up the phone and say, I'm sorry for hurting you. Do you have it? If you didn't, we don't get it. We're missing the whole concept of spirituality. No fear changing us, no respect changing us, and no love changing us. And the wine? That's expensive wine. You want to talk about that wine? That's the nourishment coming from the divine. The divine says, I want to give you so much more. But I can't. Your cup is dirty. What can I do? Create fear. I'm trying. Respect. I'm trying. Love. I'm trying. So now I will have to create a problem. And maybe you're going to get the message. And what happened, like we spoke last week, the person don't get the message, don't get the message. I don't think we get the message, none of us. Because otherwise we pick up the phone and call. Two type of people, the one we love and the one we have a problem with. 
And the one we have a problem with, we pick up the phone and say, hey, listen, I think we went through some tough time together. I don't want to hate you. And at a time like this, I want to know, I forgive you, let's move on with life. Whatever you choose to be free and after that or not, it doesn't matter. But you do it. You move on. You move on. Then, second type of phone call, people you love. And you tell them, hey, listen, spirituality is a very important part of my life. I want to be spiritual, more and more. I want to introduce you something you, you don't have to make an effort, it's free. Already you got to do, go online, study. It's not enough to call them, you have to guide them. Because the soul of the individual is covered. Remember the dirty cup who cannot receive the wine? When you talk to an individual, they don't know that the cup is dirty. They can't see, they're blindfolded. So when you put the wine, they think the wine tastes bad. They don't realize that maybe the cup is bad. It's your job and your mission and your responsibility to help them clean that cup. I always say to people, when you bring somebody to spirituality, you, you bring them with your hand, watch the lecture together. Even if you watch it before, again, with them, help them, guide them. That's what life is all about. Spirituality is love the neighbor as thyself. Now, those of you who wonder, how can you love the neighbor as thyself? <laughs> that question was asked in the 12th century. But one of the great Kabbalists, the name the Ramban, Nachmanatis. Nachmanatis was a Kabbalist from Spain. He was also the number one advisor of the king of Spain. Most of you know the, the, the debate, the argument he had with Pavlos. You know, it's the most, most famous debate, debate for lawyer study. You know, the Ramban, the Rahmanatis debate. But I'm not going to talk about the debate. I'm going to talk about his commentary on the love neighbor as thyself. And what he writes is like this. He says, how can we love our neighbor like I love myself? It's impossible. Because once you say, I'm going to take a bullet for my friend, it's an ego trip. You can't do such a thing. You can't, it's impossible. We are human beings, we're still in the body. So what do you write is say, love the neighbor as thyself means when you're doing well, you hope that they will do well. When you don't do well, you still hope they will do well. That's love the neighbor as thyself. Wisdom, pride, whatever they need, you hope they will do it. It doesn't mean canceling yourself so they will do well. That's not love the neighbor as thyself. That's what the Ramban, the Nachmanatis explain. Love the neighbor as thyself. So those of you who want to practice love the neighbor as thyself, from a spiritual point of view, you got to start there. you got to love them equally. And in the end of the commentary, you write, love the neighbor as thyself means don't get jealous when they do better than you. I don't know how many of you have true friends. Without true friends, it's almost embarrassing to be alive in this world. Now your true friend could be your wife, your husband too, your neighbor, but you need to have at least one. I always tell my kids, I don't mind you lie to God, I don't mind you lie to me, I don't mind you lie to your friend, but don't lie to yourself. You can count a true friend that you will tell them all the truth. And they can tell you all the truth. And you still love each other. It's not about that you love them more than you love yourself. That's no need for that. But you're happy for them and they do well. You want them to do well. If you want them to do better than you, that's an ego trip. If you want them to do better than you, you know, it's a control freak syndrome. And I'm sorry I cannot explain it to you. And if you disagree with me, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm not going to sit on that and explain it because it's going to become too intellectual. That's what the Ramban write. Another commentary on love the neighbor of itself, or Chaim, he write that the creation and the creator told you to love the neighbor of itself. So do it because of that. Don't do it because you understand it. Do it because the universe asks you to do it. If the universe is telling you that's the part of life, then you're going to go ahead and do it. Now you tell me, my friend. Spiritually.
spirituality. Don't you think the fundamental of spirituality is to love? Love the neighbor as themselves. And what does that mean? If you think about it, did we achieve that in this time, in the last three months, when the disease are going from country to country? Did we wake up? Did we make a promise, a vow, hope, that we will do whatever we can to get close to people? Those of you who are very close to me know that I have many ways before that virus came to meet new people. I go to a chess club or to a chess game with many people to meet them. I go to a tennis game, double, single to meet people, basketball game if needed, study with people, reading books with people going out scotch tasting. I didn't even know what I was doing in the scotch tasting. Everybody was professional. I was looking at the scotch. After the third shot, I have no idea what they're talking about anymore. Okay? So I will do whatever it takes to be with people and practice love. And I'm not trying to speak about myself. I'm just trying to show an example. Not because I'm a perfect example. Because I always tell spiritual leader, when spiritual leader reach out to me for help, out to run their community. I always said, you know, the days of setting up for example are gone. And they said, Liao, how can you talk like that? Why would you say that setting up example are gone? So I tell you why. Because nobody's watching you. <laughs> so why are you setting up an example? Tell them about the example. Tell them what you're doing. And don't be afraid of your ego or they judge you for having ego. For that reason, I'm telling you what I'm doing. So you can copy and paste. How many of you will reach out to other people and being with different type of group of people after this chaos? We have to change, my friend. We have to practice love the neighbors thyself. Whatever it is on a tennis court, basketball court, football, soccer, playing cards, what else there is out there? Uh, uh, drinking together, coffee together, uh, uh, book club. Uh, you have that group, what do you call it? Meet up. The meetup group, right? Everybody knows the meetup. You go and meet people. You have to be part of that. Not for your uh, fun only. How can I affect a human being? How can I affect a human being? I remember a wonderful gentleman. He's a lawyer by profession. And he said to me, there is a big party in downtown LA. Would you like to come? I said to him, listen, I, how many people are there? Is it about... 70, 80, a lot of business people. I said, listen, I'm, I have a little issue. I'm a little shy when I don't know the people. I'm very good when I know the people. But I have that. He said, don't worry, I will be with you. And I don't know him that well too. He just became my client about five weeks ago. I'm, I'm talking about five weeks ago, like before it happened. We go together and I'm really nervous because I don't know anybody. There's nobody there. And then the microphone is on and they say, please go say hello to some people, meet with them and start to have conversation about who you are and what you're doing. <laughs> I said, wow, well, how would I explain what I'm doing to them? I have no idea what to say. What I'm going to say, spiritual leader will teach some Kabbalah mysticism. Uh, I'm, I'm also a writer. What, what, what am I doing? I mean, I have a non-profit organization. So I'm standing there. And my, my friend already gone with his drink to with his friend. And I'm in the corner. If you know the song, it's me in the corner. Right? I'm not losing my religion yet. And I'm there. And this sweet lady uh, approaching me. She's very tall, way taller than me. I guess she's the famous model, what I didn't know. And all the men are looking how this model come to talk to me. And she said, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm, I'm, I'm a little different. This is everybody is about uh, money, money, money. And I'm actually a spiritual leader and I'm doing 
I tried to say a word that you would understand astrology is that so oh my god I need that, that and all of a sudden people start coming and talk to me of course the ego went up I put the ego in check first of all before the ego go up there and then I then I said okay what we're doing is like that and what else and from that grow to be new friends and I started meeting new friends I was shy a little bit in the beginning I have to be honest it wasn't easy for me but it, it opened up it opened up and to be honest with you I didn't want to go I was a little nervous my wife pushed me to go I said you need it you need to open doors so you can love more people you know how to love people that's your chance to love more people you know don't be shy just jump in and, and say hello right away so I'm sure most of you are shocked that you, you don't know I'm shy in the, in the first step you know I don't look shy when I, I don't come across shy just just in the beginning after I break the ice I'm good I'm rolling you know but the, the, I don't like the new in the first half an hour I'm really not comfortable that's why I like to go with friends when I go to new places but after that it, it helped me a lot because I stopped meeting new people at a tennis court and a chess club and those of you who are maybe shy like me please work on yourself you know because you cannot love people and be spiritual if you don't meet new people and too vital you know the best way to meet to meet people right now I start meeting people since I got my peloton you know that it's a bicycle and you can actually press friend with people on peloton and and have conversation that's another way you know from home you know I don't know it's a it's a, it's a computer screen and you ride and and they make you suffer I don't I don't like it to be honest but I have to do it it's good good health it's good for my health I thought it would be easy but I guess it's not you know and I thought it would be like just fun riding in the park but they're always raising the resistance level and you 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 you're going in and you say okay I can do it and then after 20 minutes you start thinking like wow I don't think I can finish this right this is way too much you know but when you finish it you feel great and the coach is great and the people are great and it's just an amazing way to meet people uh, uh, and, and love more people because spirituality means simply how can I love more people today and remember if your neighbor fight like my neighbor fight you have to reach out to make sure they're okay what happened I'm sure they're running on maybe they don't have food maybe they don't have water maybe there is a fight in the house between the kids maybe there's a fight between the husband and wife don't judge love them love them reach out to them love them love the neighbor of thyself how can I how can I love you how can I be there for you you know whatever it is love them my neighbor you know that bar mitzvah so they they forced us they brought food to my house I said that we have enough food please stop bringing food then they came back and brought candy then they came back and brought mask you know <laughs> so we can come to them I mean the love that you see people it's almost we compete who can love more it's I love it like we can love more no we can love you way more no so we bring them a gift so they bring more gift it never it's a, it's a beautiful spiritual journey when we act like that so please I'm like to ask you please please I don't know in what way to ask you that reach out to more people to watch the lecture not because more people should watch the lecture because those people need help those people need spirituality and don't be busy if they tell you no don't be busy with that just do it with them hold their hands sit with them together even there and live in a different country sit with them and say we're gonna do what we call a watch party like on Facebook we're gonna watch it together then you have a discussion you ask some question you tell them what you think they, you don't have to agree but it's good to talk about spirituality together and it's good to care about each other I would like to take you to a short meditation okay We put the music for you. Before we start, I want you just to relax and give me your big smile, okay? Like this. Smile. Let your body relax. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I want you to feel how much the creation and the creator love you I want you to repeat it 10 times in your mind the creator 
and creation love me so much. The creator and the creation love me so much. I want you to feel it, please. Please feel it. Feel it. If you don't feel it yet, put your left hand on your belly button, please. Feel it. Feel how everything around you love you. People, animal, minerals, vegetables, creator, angels. That's great. I can feel your energy already. Now I want you to climb to the next level. I want you to say to yourself, I love myself so much. Please. And now put your left hand above your belly buttons, please. And say to yourself, I love myself so much. Mean it. I love myself so much. Mean it. I love myself so much. Mean it. Now, There is one person that you forget about. You forgot that person a long time ago. The reason you forgot that person because you didn't have any more patience to help them. I want you to bring them back to your life right now with your mind. And tell them mind to mind, I love you. And I'm inviting you to my spiritual journey as that make me feel great. I know it will make you feel great. If you feel bad about yourself, about today or yesterday, it's an ego trip. Let it go. Every second you feel bad about yourself is because you can't care about another human being. Love yourself so you can love others. Inhale and exhale few times and then open your eyes please my dear friend our session come to an end I just want to leave you with this idea before I say thank you to everybody, we can be busy with ourselves in this time. That's not spiritual. If we did something wrong, do more good. You can't always fix the negativity, but you can add positivity. If you think you did negative five minutes, then give 10 minutes of goodness. If you think you did one day of bad, do one week of good. 
don't be busy cleaning. We are not the cleaning people. Stop cleaning all day long. Yes, I said to clean the cup of wine so the wine will be there. But spirituality is about giving. If you are cleaning the cup and that's all what you're busy with, that's not spiritual. But if you're cleaning the cup because you know the Creator want to give you so much, that's spirituality. The cleaning of the cup is not the goal, it's a tool. Remember that, please. So when you're cleaning yourself from negativity, yes, but what is the positive you're going to do about it? Are you going to be nice to your neighbor? Are you going to now put different cookies on your neighbor's footstep? Or a little gift that you buy from Costco or from the store, you're going to do shopping for one of your neighbors without even they know it's from you. Would you do that? Then that's what love, that's what love the neighbor as thyself start. That's what love begin. Because if we don't do that, then what are we doing here in this life? Like we're born, we die, nobody will remember we have been. Not even our grandchildren will remember we ever exist. But if we start doing good to one another, then who cares if they remember if we exist or not? We know we did good things for other people. Please remember that, as this is the fundamental of spirituality. I would like to take these minutes right now, say thank you to all the people who have been here. Marty, always there. Camila, Karen, Sharona, Esther, Nicole, Faye, let me go to the name, uh, Lydia Vega, Cam Lydia Vega, I think I, I talked to you on uh, Instagram, if I'm not mistaken, Que Paso, Mexico, Camila, I say Camila already, Darlene Williams, Sabrina Seidi, Des, welcome, again Camila, what's going on, Maggie, Andrea, Que Paso, Argentina, Andrea soon going to start teaching in uh, Spanish, those of you who want to be a teacher on Vital, reach out to me or to Debbie. We have a lot of people here that are saying hi on Facebook. Linda. In Connecticut, one second, let me finish the saying hello. I say hello to everybody. We have CBD Warrior. I love that name. <laughs> the best Wendy. name. That's Wendy. Wendy, oh, hi, Wendy. The best concept. CBD Warrior. Can I Warrior with you? Charlotte Meyer. I love that. CBD Warrior. That's a good name. It's a good name. Um, did I say a returning point? All right. And on Facebook, we what is the name? Patron and Carmen. And Daniel Tinker, Tinker. And Susan, Susan, and Ozzy Delgado, and Ozzy, Ozzy, the, yeah. Ozzy, what kind of fish you found later? My God, Ozzy, Ozzy. And, and Moshe Levy. Moshe Levy from the valley? Yes. Or Moshe Levy from New York? Oh, Moshe Levy, bicycle guy. Moshe Levy, just to let you know, guy, those of you who don't know Moshe Levy, one of the greatest examples to our life. I mean, the way he took care of his body, the way he lost weight, the way he did with his life, his children, his business, his love, is an example for me. Thank you, Moshe. All of you are examples, but Moshe, uh, I don't talk to him that often, and he, he think I forgot our conversation from five years ago. I don't. I don't, I don't forget any of our conversation. And please challenge me on this to test me if I ever forgot any conversation you ever talked to me. Because I care about you. Uh, not because I care as, as, as I file it. I don't file anything. Those of you who don't know me. I just care about you as a soul. Because I know we came here to do something together for humanity. Somebody else I didn't say thank you to? Uh, there's a lot of new people. A lot of new people? Yeah. And for all the new people that I don't know, please write to us what is that you want us to talk. I know you want us to talk about sex. I'm working on writing a whole seminar on sex and lecture the forbidden sex, the allowed sex, what allowed, what's not allowed. And it will be like open question and answer that you can ask. Uh, many people ask me from New York to do this lecture. From Chicago, we have a big group that want us to do it. From London, from Israel, from Russia, from Belgium. Everybody wanna, wanna, want us to, to talk about this subject, to just clear the air and ask. So please send us more questions about this subject or any subject so we can feed this information to you because we love to go ahead and serve you. We are here to serve you and please use us for that. Thank you so much and we love you. Is there any question? All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Love the neighbor as thyself. Don't forget. Can I close it?